Hi, Mark Gallucci with Digital Control Incorporated. This video will deal with information that's relevant for both the Falcon F5 and the Falcon F2. We're going to be using the Falcon F5 today. We're going to cover calibration. We're going to cover the AGR, which stands for above ground range. And we're going to cover the 50 foot calibration menu option. So I have to let you know, I've already conducted a few of the steps to get us this far. I've already selected the transmitter and I've already conducted the frequency optimization steps. Both of those topics are covered in a video called transmitter selection and frequency optimization. So here we are, we're about to, uh, about to calibrate. I'm now gonna turn on my transmitter and I turn it on by tightening the end cap. The batteries are already in it. Now, if I tighten the end cap pointing it down, I'm gonna start in the down mode. If I point it up and tighten the end cap, I'll start it in the up mode. So, which brings us, there are four ways that we can toggle between the up mode and the down mode with this, this transfer, Falcon transmitters. Two of those methods take place underground. They're roll combinations. A 10 to seven roll combination and an RRS, which stands for repeat roll sequence. Neither of those methods will be discussed in this video. We will, however, discuss the two above ground methods. And the first I've already explained. It's how you position the transmitter when you tighten the battery end cap. So I'm gonna point it down. I'm gonna start in the down mode, cinch that end cap up all the way. Now let's go put it in the transmitter housing, the drill head. We're gonna put the cap on it and we're gonna verify that we're exactly 120 inches, perfect from the middle of the housing to the inside edge. A couple things that we, uh, we want to continue to remember. One, you want to make sure that you're still in an area clean of, of active and passive interference. Two, you must have the transmitter in the housing, right? We never calibrate with the transmitter outside of the housing or drill head. And three, we want to make sure that we are at exact prescribed distance. Three meters from the inside edge to the middle or 120 inches, 10 foot. So I, I'm ex exactly at that position. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click the trigger. Get to the main menu, I should say. Get to the calibration screen. At the end of its sequence, it'll take an average of the measurement, the signal measurement, and convert it to a number we're familiar with. 10 foot, 120 inches. We've done that. We've already, now it automatically takes us to the AGR screen. This is where I confirm that I have a good calibration while I'm above ground. I'm gonna take this in to five foot. See what it says. It says exactly five foot. Let's take it out. Let's take it out to 20 foot. Right here, let's see what it says. Exactly 20 foot. Let's do one more. Let's take it out to 30 foot. 29, 11, 30, 30 foot in between. So we've got a great calibration. We've just proved it. Now, had I needed to prove my calibration to distances beyond 30 foot, that is where we employ the 50 foot calibration menu. So let's go out there. I'm gonna go to the 50 foot calibration menu option, which is a subset of the calibration screen. Above ground range, click it. 50 foot calibration menu. One thing I need to point out, conducting this 50 foot calibration has absolutely zero effect on the readings that we will see later on the day when we go underground. This has nothing to do with our red depth. All it has to do with is, is showing that you've got a good clean calibration at, at distances greater than 30 foot. So the inspector said, well, I'd really like to see what that looks like at 40 foot. We're drilling at 40 foot today. Can you show me how accurate that is? Well, I certainly can. Conduct a 50 foot calibration, bring it back into whatever distance. I'm gonna bring it into 40 foot. Let it stabilize a little bit. 40 foot right in there. Once again, all we've done is just confirm we have a good above ground calibration. We've confirmed we have a good calibration doing an above ground test. That's all it is. So let's go ahead and bring this thing back in to 10 foot. Because we have two modes, we have to calibrate twice. 
we certainly want to take advantage of that other mode and unless you calibrate it you won't be able to do that uh, so let's put that in position this takes us to the alternate way the second way that we ch change from up mode to down mode or from down mode to up mode above ground it's called the tilt method I'm gonna grab this housing I'm gonna grab the nose and I'm gonna raise it up something more than 65 degrees and I'm gonna count Grab it, something more than 65 degrees, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and I'm gonna lay it back down. Now, I was very careful not to change the clock, the roll face. We need to keep it at the same roll face throughout this whole thing or this method will not work. After we've done that, 10, 12 seconds later, I expect to see the signal strength to drop out. I expect to see my data to drop out. And there we go. That's, that's proof positive we were successful. So now that we have the transmitter change mode, now we need to change the handheld receivers mode. And there's a shortcut method. We merely grab the thumb switch, hold it to the right, brings up the shortcut menu. I'm currently on that mode. I need to go up, highlight that, click it. Back down to here to locate screen. And there we go, we're up and going again. And now we're ready to, to calibrate that second mode. Now, the last thing I want to mention about calibration. At times, you might see a red A appear on the screen. That tells you that the receiver is swamped with signal. It's in a state of signal saturation. You will not be able to calibrate if you see that A accompanied with flashing signal strength. Now, if you see an A that is not accompanied with flashing signal strength, that tells us the receiver has self-adjusted or muted the signal strength. And we've done that so that users can now put the box on the ground and not have saturation. So you can drill as shallow as, I want to say 13, 14 inches now. Formally, if you put the box on the ground at such shallow depths, you would have saturated the receiver. So again, if you see the A that is not accompanied by flashing signal strength, that just lets you know that we've self-adjusted or muted the signal to give you the ability to drill and locate at much shallower depths. So I think that's it. So stay tuned for more videos that help you work with your Falcon equipment. Thank you.